Welcome to our group garage in this video showing the radial probability distribution or where we really think we'll find electrons in an Adams 2P subshell. Remember, rather than the Bohr model of a fixed circular orbit around an atom where there is only one single amount or quantized energy path, we've modeled our electrons as a wave following the wave nature of particles as postulated by de Broglie. Rather than a simple spherical wave we had in the S subshell, for the principal or P shells, the model predicts we will have three familiar dumbbell shaped orbitals with our first shown here in the wave forming the dumbbell's 2P subshell. We'll color in red and we'll align this with the X axis and call it 2PX. The next 2P subshell is perpendicular and we can align this with the Y axis. We will color this one green, and since it's aligned with the y-axis, we'll call it 2PY. The final, or third, P subshell is also at right angles to the other two, and so it's aligned with the z-axis. And we'll color this blue and call it the 2PZ. Again, note that in this configuration, each of the P subshells are at right angles to the other two, or called orthogonal. Since we know each wave holds two electrons, one with spin up and one with spin down, the three P subshells will hold a total of six electrons. For this wave model, it is when we look to see where the electron is, or rather it is our measurement, we say, collapses the wave function and reveals the electron as a particle somewhere within the region of this wave. If you remember, this is similar to what we saw in the S subshells. So, if we look at or keep measuring two different PZ electrons, we start to see a pattern emerge. And this pattern follows the familiar dumbbell shape. So like the wave function, there are two opposing or dumbbell regions across from the atom where we find the electron most of the time. Now, there is an important difference to note, and that is the actual wave function for the P orbitals, where the P subshell actually begins at zero. So like the s orbitals, there will be a region near the atom where we will not typically find electrons. In this case though, there is actually a zero chance of finding an electron because the wave function is zero. This is again called a node. This time, rather than a spherical node around the center of the atom, for the pz electron, the node is on the xy plane, called a nodal plane. Of course, this shape in the node structure is not unique to the pz electrons. The radial wave function for px and py electrons are very similar, with just a difference in the magnetic quantum number. This difference really just results in a different orientation, simply a different direction around the nucleus. So our green py orbital, which we have along the y-axis, will have a vertical nodal plane in the xz plane. For the red px orbital, which is aligned along the x-axis, we will see this vertical node plane just in the yz plane. Again, a node is where there is zero chance of finding an electron because the wave function is zero. To get the probability distribution, we start with this wave function. These were solutions to the Schrodinger equation. We then square this wave function, and this gives us the electron density. Remember, as we integrate from the origin outward, the volume increases, so as we go, this gives us the probability of where we'll measure the electron. And this is the same for all three principal subshells, just aligned in a different direction. Now, like in the previous video, when we were initially working with the s orbitals, it was very easy to just assume the 2s subshell was a larger version of 1s. But we saw that wasn't true we saw an increase in the number of nodes. Given how the s orbitals progressed, where each principal energy level increase added in a node with no possibility of electrons in that region, then added another dense region. You should probably be able to guess now where the nodes will appear when we go from the 2p to the 3p orbitals. We will leave here with the wave function for 3p, and as you think about this, think about how you can draw out the radial probability or where we'll find the 3p and then maybe the 4p electrons. And with that, we'll see you in the next video. Hit the thumbs up if you found this video helpful, and for more, consider becoming a subscriber.
If you like to support the channel and more projects in the group garage, I'd appreciate if you use the link below to buy me a coffee. Thanks.